Welcome to our online service. Today is the 11th of November, it's Armistice Day. And so we will pause at 11 o'clock for a minute's silence. But I invite you now just to still your hearts and minds as we gather our thoughts as we come in worship. As we come then in worship today, let's use the prayer that's on the screen and I invite you to read this with me as we gather. Lord God Almighty, we humble ourselves before you and worship you because you alone are the living God. We thank you for your son, Jesus Christ. Thank you for such great love and thank you, Jesus, for giving up your life on a cross so that sinners might be saved and know everlasting rest. We give you thanks for military personnel, chaplains and a chain of command. We remember too, those who have died in service for the United Kingdom. Help each of us to understand the cost of war. May we never take our liberty for granted. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
few years ago, Maxine and I visited Talbot House. Talbot House is in a town called Popperang in Belgium, an unoccupied part of Belgium during, during the Great War, just back from the front line of Ypres, or Ilpra. This small town became a nerve centre for the British Army. And in the heart of that bustling town, two army chaplains, Neville Talbot and Phil Tubby Clayton, opened up a club, a place for soldiers to go of all ranks. And from December 1915, for more than three years, the house they had provided recreation to all soldiers, regardless of their ranks. They could relax, have refreshments, but also spend time, as you see from the services sheets there, worshipping God together. Today, the ground floor is a museum and a coffee shop that does really good cream teas. But the rest of the house is set out as it would have been during the war. And in the very rafters, the very top of the house, you climb up this really steep ladder into a chapel area. Do you know, as I think about Talbot House, I'm reminded of many who serve as army chaplains, seeking to minister to the soldiers the presence of God. And I'd like for a few moments just to play you a portion of a piece uh, written by a Baptist minister called Phil Jump. He's from the Northern Baptist Association and, uh, and the fuller video, there's a link uh, in the description below, but the fuller video just shares some thoughts and reflections from an army chaplain. I spent some time with a wounded soldier. He asked me, what's God like, Padre? Oh, he was writhing about in pain. He was close to death, to be honest. What's God like? This God who gets us to fight, this kernel of the world, what's he like? I, I thought for a minute or two and then I pointed to a crucifix above one of the officer's beds. I said, he's like that. He's like that. The soldier was quiet for a minute or two and then he looked at me, his face full of doubt and disappointment. God's not like that, Padre, he said. God's almighty. Not nailed to a cross, broken in all but spirit. He's almighty. You get us to sing songs about God's victory. But you've not been out on the front line, Padre. This world is still full of sin, he said. Sin like this filthy wall. He's out of it. God's out of it. That's what one of the lads said to me in the trenches. Christ suffered once and for all and then ascended into heaven and left us here in hell. I mean, they're, they're tired, cold, frightened boys. That's all they are. What's God like for them? And then one day it struck me. I was running back towards our lines, mad with fright, to be honest, and I, I went across this bit of open land, used to be a wooded copse or something, and I tripped. I must have stumbled over something or other, and I looked down to see what I'd tripped over, and there, on the ground, looking up at me, was this young, underfed, undersized, underage German boy, wounded in his head and his stomach. And I looked down at this pathetic creature and I thought what's this got to do? what the devil has he got to do with you hmm? you're not some blonde blue-eyed Prussian you're a boy that's all and as I looked down at the face on this boy it was as if Jesus on the cross took his place <laughs> there was Jesus looking up at me and I could hear these words whatever you do for the least of these little ones you do for me and from that moment on, I, I never saw the battlefields as anything other than Jesus on the cross. That's what I saw. I saw him in the slums. I saw him in the overcrowded quarter. I saw him in some vulgar street speaking to me of luxury and waste. I saw him in the headlines of a newspaper, speaking out about a lost, bewildered and tortured world. But the vision of life in the cross is not one of despair. It's not. It's one of hope. It's one of confidence. 
Why? I'll tell you why. Because behind the cross is an empty tomb. And Jesus, with his wounded hands, ready to bless you, ready to ascend into heaven, A reading is from 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 17 to 21. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old is gone and the new is here. All this is from God, who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting people's sin against them. And he has committed to us the message of reconciliation. We are therefore Christ's ambassadors, as though God were making his appeal through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. For God made him who had no sin to be sin for us, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Today is the 11th of November. Today is Armistice Day. I wonder, what does armistice mean to you? I guess the truth is we all approach the day differently, don't we? It might depend on our age or our own family experience. And therefore, the day takes on a different meaning. For some, it is a time of remembering lost comrades and friends. For others, it might be about remembering our own family members who gave their lives in the great war and the wars that have followed. For all of us though, Armistice is an important day. It's expressed in this painting that was sent to me and so thank you to Nina for this painting which she says was inspired to her by God. And the title at that bottom is Lest We Forget. And that's an important, isn't it, for Armistice Day that we don't forget. See, Armistice is about remembering the consequences of war the fallen, the horror and the conflict of injury, the impact on families, the grief, the fear, the hardship. The painting shows us, doesn't it, something of that darkness of that time, but also Armistice is about hope. Because out of that darkness in that painting, the poppies are beginning to come through to remind us of the beginning of peace. And so Armistice is remembering that day that the guns fell silent. That there is hope for a better future. Because this was the great war that would end all wars. But this is not the end of war and conflict, just as peace coming was not the end of God's presence with us. That chaplain's video at the beginning reminded us God didn't just endure the cross and then disappear back to heaven. Instead, God, through the Holy Spirit, remains with us in the chaos of our lives. God stands alongside us and with us, just as he did through the chaplains with the soldiers in the Great War. Just as he does through each one of us in the lives of those around us during this time of a pandemic. You see, the poppy reminds us to not forget. The cross, though, as the symbol reminds us, is that despite the pain and hardship we may face, is that we're not forgotten by God. Because the cross is a symbol of hope that sin has been defeated and that through faith we can have eternal life. It's here that the cross and the poppy, I guess, differ. The poppy it was hope for a peace that was not realised because other wars followed. But in the cross we know that sin is defeated and we can be at peace with God. And yet, sadly, by so many, they choose not to accept it. And so actually, in a way, it remains unclaimed and yet not unrealised. I pray that you may today on this Armistice Day reflect on the hope of peace, but also respect on the hope, reflect on the hope that we have of peace with God through Jesus Christ. Let's pray together. So Lord Jesus, on this Armistice Day, we come to you and we pray for the peace of your forgiveness to be realised in our lives. 
make us right with you. Forgive us for our sin and draw us closer to you, we pray. And on this Armistice Day, may we remember the hope of peace within our world. So we pray for peace within our nation, within our communities. We pray for those battles that people face against race and colour and disability. We pray that those things will be eliminated. We pray that for, for peace to come where f wars are fought in the name of religion. We pray for peace in our world. That once again, guns may fall silent. That words will not be used to destroy, but to build up and to enable and to encourage and so lord jesus may we be part of that bringing peace to our world for we ask this in jesus name amen we're going to come in a moment to a time of silence where we will remember the fallen in war but also the potential hope of armistice for peace and the work of jesus on the cross Friends, let us remember in silence before God all those who have died in war. For they shall not grow old as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor years condemn. For at the going down of the sun and in the morning, we will remember them.
God of hope, we come to you in the midst of a world in which we are wearied by uncertainty and restriction, frustrated by our inability to cope and overcome, concerned for loved ones and vulnerable strangers, bewildered and unclear about the road that lies ahead. Yet we come in hope, because in Jesus we see light that overcomes darkness, resurrection and life springing from brutality and execution, salvation born in the midst of human chaos, the broken and abandoned, healed and restored. We come in hope, because your words are the words of eternity, your promises stand unassailable and unchanging, and even in the midst of creation's deepest groans, we hear the song of eternity's dawn. We hear the song of hope. God of hope, though our hope may sometimes falter, hold us fast in your eternal love and inspire us again with the possibilities of your kingdom. Draw close to those whose hope is failing, strengthen those whose struggle is beyond what they can bear, comfort and restore those who feel broken by all we have endured. Grant what we need for this day's journey, the faith to believe that the demands of tomorrow will not be overwhelming, and the courage to continue in the face of all that present circumstances require of us. And help us to never forget that our hope is secure, for it remains founded on that which no earthly circumstance can ever overcome. Write that truth deep in our hearts, that we might speak its promise into the lives of all who walk this troubled road with us. Please join me as we say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Thank you for joining with me for this service together. Thank you also to the Northern Baptist Association for the resources that we've used today from them and for putting Creative Commons licenses on those so that we're able to use those on this service. You're welcome to join me on Sunday morning for our service, which starts at half past ten on this our YouTube channel. Uh, if you click the subscribe button, you'll pick up the notification uh, of that automatically. But as we close together now, I invite you to say with me the words on the screen as we bless one another with the words of the grace. We say, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen.